finish this plane was put together, I wanted this episode to be kind of the final product of paint, but just time was going on. My hanger's not done yet. I don't have space to put it all together yet. That's in a couple days. And I wanted to get an episode out there for you guys to kind of know what's going on. Cause you're like, hey, what's going on with uh, Backcountry Bogey? <gasps> It's clear direct. Okay, let's back up a little bit. A few weeks ago, we all met up at Johnson Creek, Todd, Matt, and myself. Todd has a YouTube channel called Gravity Night Flying. I'm sure you've subscribed, and if you haven't, uh, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself why, and go subscribe, because he is an awesome individual, a great pilot, and has a really, really cool S7 called Angry Bird. So he does some amazing stuff in really, really high country, high density altitudes. So glad you dropped by. It's awesome. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for bringing Angry Bird and Matt and his S21. Do you have a name for your S21 yet? Uh, Strato Bound, I guess. Strato Bound. So it's an outbound that he routinely flies to the stratosphere. 23,000 feet. 23,000 feet. Okay, that's something I'll never do. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Todd for indulging me and allowing me to world premiere the name on his channel. Okay, right, here yeah. Here it is. Yeah. World premiere. Backcountry bogey. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, a wannabe backcountry pilot, so... You know, hopefully I'll step into that. That's uh, freaking awesome. That name, but that's yeah, because you flew, bogey. what did you fly? I flew F-15s for 15s. 21 years. Wow. Fly. Big old boats, buses, now 737s. So yeah. That's why yeah. I do this and the backcountry that's thing for fun. Freaking sweet. Well, if you can't tell, I'm just so excited to get into this culture and develop these friendships anymore. So that's what it's all about. Okay, back to the project. This is it. This is the episode where concept becomes a reality. So as we mentioned in the previous episode, the primer goes on first, and then it's a base kind of ceiling coat, which looks white. And then they mask everything off for the dark, so the charcoal color is already sprayed. You don't see it right now because it's already sprayed and down. Then they mask off everything for the light gray or the silver, so that's where we're at right now. So you can see this will be a checkerboard right here in silver, and then this will be black. You can see it's masked. What you're looking at right now, the white, is actually gonna be that red. So those are gonna be the red stripes. What I just decided a couple days ago was to get an American flag in there, which you can see right here. Another detail here is the mountains. So this is a mask. You can see it's kind of bubbled right there. But we have the mountains kind of stylized and squished together, but from the Bend Airport. We flipped it on the other side. Which we didn't know, and that was very confusing for us, because we put it down like, oh, this stencils were wrong. Oh, no. And then we realized, nope, the mountains just sort of flipped around. Yeah, exactly. So from this angle, it's also Bachelor, Tumalo, Broken Top, South, Middle, North, Sister. So that's awesome. A little detail there. Pretty. Let's talk about straight lines on what seems to be a flat surface, but actually there's a curved surface. So first off, the vinyl you're seeing is printed um, and cut, and so they just laid it on, but there's a, a little bit of a curve to the fuselage, so that naturally makes the, the vinyl wanna bend down or up. So there's two ways that we thought about doing this. One is using a projector and projecting the cut files on this, and then masking just on that. The second option, which is what they actually did, is they used a laser. They have a, a straight line laser and put it at the same you know, elevation, shoot it across and make it straight and just finesse the vinyl. And that's why you're seeing the yellow turn to blue up here is because the curve gets much more pronounced up here and it's much harder to keep it straight. So that blue tape is more like that automotive tape where you can bend it. I want to thank Mirko so much for his uh, artistry and just amazing talent because one unique thing about this paint job is that it is blocky or it is um, a lot of straight lines and I think that goes well with this fuselage because it is a fairly you know uh, it's not a Lance Air right it's, it's it's got a straight bottom there kind of straight sides kind of straight right there straight tail and so I think he's using those cues with the straight lines as well as I like Art Deco. There's not a lot of curves in Art Deco. So that's, uh, that's part of the, the genius behind this paint job. Thanks, Mirko. Okay, let's get to spraying red. we uh, 
Scott, right it and sand it. What is so it? then we go through, we're gonna blow it off, we get as much dust off as possible, and then we have a water-based cleaner we come through and wipe on it, um, just because it's really good with like fingerprints and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Get the oils off yep. of it. Yep. Exactly. He's too fast, I missed it. He put the color codes in the computer and it sends it to this thingy. It tells him the weights and the concoction. Stir it up. All right, so that was pretty much one, two coats, right? How two many? Coats. How many coats are we planning on? I'm gonna shoot for probably five to six. Let it cure overnight, and then unmask it in the morning. Yep. Yeah. Clear. And then, clear. then clear cook. And yeah. I'll be three coats of clear. Three coats of clear. Yeah. So close. Yep. You taste it, literally. <laughs> Red's delicious. <laughs> Red's delicious. Candy apple red. <laughs> all right, today is the day. It's 6.30 in the morning and we're gonna rip off all this masking and show you the paint. that this, this line starts all the way up here that becomes the mountains in the back. I forgot. Man, it just worked out well with this knack of it being in a solid color. I was kind of worried about that checkerboard and then of course the oil doors all just on the dark. That's great. What are you doing and what's next? Um, right now we're just cleaning up any little thing that went wrong, which isn't much. Uh, we're just kind of Removing some of the red from around the rivets on blowouts where the masking lifted, and then uh, we'll touch them up with a brush, and uh, then it's time to make it shiny. Shiny. Clear it. Clearly, this is a fun milestone, and I think seeing it in paint gives it a bit of a personality, if not a soul. The soul happens when you fly. Okay, we're a couple hours later, and they've sprayed the logo, and they're about ready to spray the clear coat. So let's check out the logo. Top of the cow here, bottom of the cow here. So it's not gonna be mapped much longer. Right side logo. Got it flipped, just kind of like the American flag, so it's pointing into the wind. Okay, stay tuned. This episode continues, but that's it for me today on the Friday before Labor Day. They're gonna spray clear, but I can't be here because I gotta run off to fly the Bonanza to pick up the kiddos in Boise. Ah, change of plans. More delays with the hangar. You can see there's no 
heater installed because electrical hasn't finished. We're waiting on the city co-op, I think, to do something with a transformer. Okay, well the gas is plumbed from the ground, ready for meters, and then connecting to each of the 10 pipes with easements going to each of the hangers. But this is the real problem. For some reason, what I'm told is that the city or county, whoever services this, needs to have reach from a truck from out here to, I think that's a transformer. And so they had to shift things around, so they had to build this new thing. It's just sitting here waiting for them to pick it up, turn it around, reinstall it. Then we can flip the switch for power and then finish off the uh, gas. Then get the inspection because that's going to be a tough one to pass because if you recall, we had to upgrade from R19 to R30. Now, the reason why I can't go back into my friend Robert's hangar is, and I'm so grateful for him, but he's just um, bought a few more things and toys and whatnot, and so uh, I can't move back into that hangar. So, what is the solution? Thank you, Steven and Brian at Cascade Customs and Design. If I don't put the wings on, they said it's easy to store the RANs there. So let's go check out the final paint scheme over at Cascade Customs and Design. Hello. Oh. Oh, so shiny. Evo repairs at the moment, so okay. we're totally safe to that. And we can also just start consolidating by putting stuff in boxes and boxing it up for you or putting it into your totes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I can bring more. And you can grab, yeah, I know. I know you got some totes. Yeah. <laughs> we bought totes from the same guy who suspiciously, I think, was uh, transporting um, something green in them. They smell yeah. very strong. Yeah. But to each their own. I mean, it's, it's like so close. Like I could see it, you know, conceptually, but just it all together. Can't quite put it in my brain yet. Does this count as the first scratch? Drilling through a brand new paint job. Oof. Yeah. I was just gonna ask, I know you're not gonna be really comfortable with this guys. If I was too straight up, like whatever line you're trying to run parallel to. So we can play off your end numbers and your flag. You can try to put it off like that. Well, there's not a lot of, if I, if I angle it, reference these two um, lines of rivets, then it might rub up against a, um, a bulkhead. So I think I want it just squared up inside of these rows of rivets. So this is the uh, Pro Seal that we put around uh, the edge of all the windows. We do like a little quarter inch-ish bead to goo on the windows to kind of do a nice transition between the glass up the painted surface, so. Yeah. Is that the same Pro Seal that I use on the like fuel tank? So uh, it's, it's a different kind. This one is specifically made for windows. Okay. Um, and like trim stuff, I guess. So it ends up being a nice, really like glossy jet black. Oh, nice. It smells similar. Yeah, it all has that terrible, oh, sulfury, yeah. <laughs> who farted smell. <laughs> Best idea ever. Air pressure to push Pro Seal out? Yes, please. <laughs> no more carpal tunnel, yay. <laughs> oh, man. It's nice to see my interior again. We got it all sprayed with pretty much just a flat gray. It's soon, it's so soon. It feels like it's taken forever and I appreciate you guys sticking with. It's late September, we got we got a backcountry fly in next weekend in northeastern Oregon in the Bonanza and then High Sierra fly in. Unfortunately, won't be in the backcountry bogey. It will be in the Bonanza this year and hopefully the weather's good. But that's the plan for the next couple weeks. Episodes will start picking up again. Till next time, be quick.
Good, these are the real heroes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this man standing upside down. Woo.